Hello everyone, in this video I'll be discussing project selection. In other words, how are specific projects chosen to begin in an organization? The learning objectives for this video are as follows. After watching, students should be able to explain how projects are selected in some organizations, as well as understand the key responsibilities of a project manager. Many companies often have multiple ideas or proposals for projects at once. Large companies can have hundreds or even thousands of projects every year. Saber, which is a parent company of Travelocity.com, has as many as 1,500 proposals for 600 funded projects every single year. With all the potential projects that an organization can undertake, the organization needs a way to carefully manage and decide among the projects. There are several different ways to categorize or characterize projects, including by size, cost, purpose, length, risk, scope, and economic value. An approval committee uses the system request and the feasibility study to determine which projects to begin. Using these documents and the characteristics listed on the previous slide, most organizations take a project portfolio perspective. That is, organizations ask, how does the project fit within the entire portfolio of projects? This involves making trade-offs on various characteristics in order to select projects to form a balanced portfolio. For example, organizations will want to have a balance of large and small projects, expensive and less expensive projects, high-risk and low-risk projects, and so forth. If a lot of high-risk projects are currently being undertaken, a new proposal for a high-risk project will likely be deferred or rejected. The same could go for any of the characteristics listed on the previous slide. Any viable project might be rejected or deferred due to project portfolio issues. To more carefully manage the project portfolio, some organizations utilize PPM, or Project Portfolio Management Software. This software collects and manages information about all of the projects, both ongoing and those awaiting approval. The benefit of using PPM software is that companies stay up to date on their projects and adapt to changing conditions. PPM software includes features such as project prioritization, employee allocation, real-time project monitoring, flagging cost and time variances, and monitoring economic feasibility. We won't go into detail about PPM software in this class, but hopefully you understand some of the key features and the benefits involved from using PPM software. I'll also note that PPM software is different from project management software, such as Microsoft Project. We'll talk about project management software in another video. Pause for a moment and think about a company you've worked for or are currently working for. Can you think of any examples of projects in your organization that might be feasible, yet might be rejected or deferred in favor of other projects? Feel free to share your answer in the online forum. Once a project fits into the project portfolio and is approved to begin, a project manager is appointed to lead the project. A project manager could be the systems analyst in some organizations, especially very small ones or in consulting projects, but in large organizations, the project manager is often someone different. The project manager also could, in rare cases, be the project sponsor, but that doesn't happen very often. Duties of a project manager include the following. Selecting the best project methodology, developing a project work plan, establishing a staffing plan, and creating ways to coordinate and control the project. We'll talk about the first two duties this week, and next week we'll focus more on the last two duties. In summary, this video has explained how projects are selected in some organizations, and also briefly touched on the duties of a project manager. 